Good morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett of Neurosurgical TV. We have Yuha's Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. I'll turn it right over to Yuha. Good, good day, Yuha. It's all yours. Thank you very much, John. Nihao, good evening, everybody. So I will speak about surgery of PCAM, internal carotid artery aneurysms. In the regular sp uh, speaking, we speak many times of PCAM aneurysms, but it is not true. They are originating from internal carotid artery. So, but we speak usually about PCAM aneurysms. The true PCAM aneurysms are rare. We come in the next lectures to that. So I'm working in China now at Henan Provincial People's Hospital and I will speak about surgery of PCAM internal carotid artery aneurysms. So this is the background for this lecture. I have been working in Finland in two cities, Kuopio, Eastern Finland, 17 years, and I was chairman in Helsinki, 18 years in these centers. We formed a very good, profound databases on cerebral aneurysms. So altogether, there are more than 17,000 patients with more than 22,000 aneurysms with good follow-up and clinical data. And that in this series, there are more than 4,000 internal carotid artery aneurysms. I checked the data of first angiography in Finland. It is even earlier, it is 1936 when first uh, cerebral angiography was done nine years after Monit's introduction of the method. So how it was in earlier times, this is the angiography. Puncture. I have done also this when I was resident with it in trauma cases. I have done uh, maybe 200 angiographies with direct puncture. And how is what was it in earlier times to treat the aneurysms? Very difficult. You used silk ligature and primitive clips, Oliver Kluna clips, to take the base of the aneurysms. This is a large MCA aneurysm. So it is usually said, uh, uh, what are the PCAM aneurysms? These are aneurysms of internal carotid artery in close proximity of PCAM artery. This is the Finnish Helsinki Kuopio database, site of the aneurysms. So most common aneurysm is middle cerebral artery aneurysms and internal carotid artery aneurysms form 20%, so more than 4,000 uh, patients in this series. PCAM aneurysms, PCAM aneurysms are many times called easy aneurysms. I did my first aneurysm surgery in July 1976. It went well with high fetch clips. Clip, I was assisted by my mentor, late Seppo Pakarinen, in this operation. It went very well. But this week, on Tuesday, I operated PCAM aneurysm, easy aneurysm, had intraoperative rupture, which I could manage. And the patient is doing well, but it shows that these aneurysms might be difficult to handle. Maybe it is the attitude. You think they are easy aneurysms, and then you will have difficulties. And this is very important. The attitude, the attitude of the surgery, you don't have any easy aneurysms. You have to be ready to handle everything. Next week, I will show the Tuesday case. We have, have a video of what happened in the operation. So become aneurysms are generally about the skull base. They have surprising high management, morbidity and mortality when you make careful checkup of the cases and long-term follow-up. And what is the reason for complications? It is usually occlusion of the posterior communicating artery. 
if it is larger one, so the patient might have infarctions and also the perforators of the become uh, important. So these are the usual causes of uh, complications in the patients. How to diagnose PCAM aneurysms? We used good quality CT angio for open microsurgery because you have to see the skull base. We have to see the relation of the skull base and aneurysms because if the aneurysm become ICA aneurysm is located close to the skull base, then it might be very difficult to treat. For open microsurgery, DSA pictures are floating in heaven because you don't see any skull base. Of course, they are good for endovascular surgery, but not good for open microsurgery. You have to see the skull base. Good quality CT angio is extremely important. As mentioned, we have to see the relation of the skull base and aneurysm. Careful preoperative study, you can do it rather quickly. When you have devotion and skills to do the CT angiography. We could manage uh, very well with CT angio angiography, DSA angiography, was, uh, DSA was very seldom done. When treating these aneurysms, only in very proximal PCAM aneurysms, you have to do anterior clinoidectomy. And then sometimes if the aneurysm is large, you have to think about proximal control. Also, seldom you can use the cervical carotid artery or you can use the ballon. I have three carotid uh, dissections with ballon, so I have given th that up and my usual proximal control is intracavernous carotid artery because it has very seldom atherosclerosis and of course you can come there only with clinoidectomy. The different surgeries in PCAM ICA aneurysms, you have elective unruptured, then you have acute ruptured and emergency. Large intracerebral hematoma is usually located in temporal lobe and if the patient is poor condition, you can save patient's life by emergency surgery. And then you have advanced, well-planned approaches in the cases of large, giant, or fusiform aneurysms. Planning, how is the patient? What is the patient grade? Usually the World Federation uh, grading is now used. We used earlier Hunt and Hess and Dr. Drake used water grading. I have been using that also when studying Dr. Drake's and PLS cases. All are rather similar. Then the patient age is important if there is intracerebral hematoma, size of the aneurysm, which type of the aneurysm, ruptured, unruptured, and very important for open microsurgery are if there are calcifications present because they mean that the clipping is more difficult. I position always myself, the patient, and think when positioning how the aneurysm is directed and modify, tailor a little bit head position to have good angle to clip the aneurysm. And during the surgery, I change the head position frequently. I ask the anesthetic site to lift the head or go down with the head. And of course, I'm using the mouthpiece in the microscope. It means that the, my angle can be easily changed. And in my videos, there is all the time moving. This is coming from the movements of the microscope with the mouthpiece, which is very useful and makes the surgery by far faster, cutting around 40% of the surgical time. This is the craniotomy I have been using since 80s, lateral supraorbital approach with minimal saving, preparation of the wound for short incision, local anesthetic infiltration, 
with lidokine and adrenaline, and then I make a single layer flap. It means because the temporal muscle is cut only short, like you will see in the videos. So there is seldom temporal muscle atrophy and never frontal facial branch injury. This is important because this might be cosmetically difficult. When you are dissecting toward the aneurysm, so you creep slowly with forceps and sucker subfrontally. I'm using many times water dissection to separate the frontal lobe from the skull base, and then sub dissection is the best method to dissect the aneurysm. And I use more often than not temporary clips. Here in Henan, in China, there is huge atherosclerosis, and this makes use of temporary clips difficult. And this is one of the big differences to operate on here than in Europe or other places of the world. So the common and heavy atherosclerosis, even in young, younger patients, makes the surgery by far more difficult. Then in fresh, Subarachnoid hemorrhage, you have red, angry, swollen brain with good neuroanesthesia. You will change it, slack brain in surgery. You can open lamina terminalis. You can do also ventriculostomy, which I don't like because with lamina terminalis opening, you go always to the right place. With ventriculostomy, you might not hit the ventricle and uh, cause some intra cerebral bleeding. So I like lamina terminus opening. I think in the videos we will see how, how it is. So here is the first video. The, this video is edited by Johan Shoku Velasque, my fellow. He made huge work in these 1001 videos. The CTA angio is not so good, but here you see how the aneurysm is broad based and very thick pecan was coming from the base of the aneurysm. This one you have to save. This is must here and might be difficult with endovascular means. So here, atras supra roads and we are creeping below the subfrontal, the subfrontally towards right optic nerve and opening the basal cisterns. CSF is coming and then slowly sucking out to have slack brain to have a good view to the aneurysm. And here is sharp dissection with microschisos. I'm using high magnification and take a look now on the aneurysm. It looked very innocent, but it is not. It is not. As very thin places in the aneurysm, it looked, it can never rupture, but this would rupture. So I put here, take a curved clip, which is taking the proximal carotid artery, but also the peak hum inside the temporary clip. Both are inside the clip now the big PCAM, and then we put the distal clip below anteriocroidal artery, and then we have trapped the aneurysm with the golden temporary clips. And now we dissect the aneurysm carefully, taking the small arachnoid bands. And this is pilot clip, rather uh, much opening. This is Sukita Mitsuho clip, going there, looks rather clumsy clip, big in relation to the aneurysm that opens much and it has plump ending, so it is not so easy to perforate the aneurysm. And now taking the temporary clips out, and here you have to be careful because the clip handles may be stuck to each other, so you have to be very slow and carefully taking out. And now the proximal clip, 
is coming out and now we begin to dissect the aneurysm. I coagulate down the aneurysm, dissect it. It looks bigger than in the CT angio. It is usually one millimeter big, bigger than in CT angio. And now I coagulate down the aneurysm, dissect it. On the right side is the oculomotor nerve. And then I take the schizos. You see, the schizos are like crocodiles, look big because the magnification is high. And I cut the aneurysm because it is attached to the oculomotor nerve and work more with the aneurysm. There's no bleeding because the clip is taking the base. And now check the situation and then coagulate down the remnant of the aneurysm here. And here you have to be careful. Like you see that when I coagulate, it may stuck, stick to the aneurysm base. And now I change the smaller clip or add smaller clip. Yeah, here I leave the original bigger clip in place and check the situation now and then we make CT angio to be sure that the peak hum, the big peak hum is filling and free and also it's perforators and this is CT angio after that. Control angio. So next, here we have, a, I think, a ruptured aneurysm edited by Daniel Kotirov. He's in Israel now, originally Russian. Here's a left ruptured PCAM ICA aneurysm. Where is the aneurysm? Where is the aneurysm? Ruptured aneurysm. Very small aneurysm. Even very small aneurysm rupture, and this is something uh, Isua study was claiming they don't rupture. This is not true. Preparing left side, please no, no shaving of the hair, and little only little shaving, and then cutting down hooks, retracting one burr hole here. I have done this. Since I was young neurosurgeon, I didn't understand why you are doing basally the hole, and then going making two cuts with craniotome and then breaking the flap out. And now you see how slack is the brain. Good neuroanesthesia, wonderful neuroanesthesia. Even the brain is red, angry, swollen. So there is enough room. There is subdural hematoma. This happens in PCAM aneurysms small subdural hematoma and again creeping down going to the optic nerve this is our landmark optic nerve and opening the basal systems cutting arachnoid fibers here with the microski source and now we have the ICA here covered with fresh blood. We usually operate it on the first day, even the day of the rupture. And now we see well, where is the bleeding coming? There's some bleeding now. Yeah, let's take a look. I put the temporary clip proximally. And then I should put the distal clip also, second temporary clip below anterior croid artery and then we have the aneurysm base dissecting with micro dissector here now now my hand is covering the light but the pilot clip is going like in the first video in place it's not taking all the aneurysm because it should be a curved clip here. It should be a curved clip here. Let's see what, what's happening here. Okay, I take a curved clip here and put it below the first one. There's enough space for that and then slowly bring the clip into place. 
this is actually not double clipping, clipping technique, but uh, this is more detailed. Then I take the distal temporary clip out and then proximal temporary clip out and take also the first straight clip out. And now it should be okay. Many times I continue, but this should be okay. This should be okay. Now you see that the anorism is already empty, ruptured. It's empty. Now we check the situation and uh, I put one, one more clip. Now it is what we call double clipping. You have two clips uh, besides each other to take all the base of the anorism. Then flushing. This is double probe, small double probe, double probe to check the flow. And clean water by flushing and usually adding some papaverin on the place. This is papaverin now going to release the manipulation spasm. And this is the situation after surgery. Closing controls here. So we go to the next case. Again, edited by Daniel Kozurev. Left ruptured PCAM segment aneurysm. This is a larger one now and later than not operated in the first day because there was not so much blood in CT. You cannot see so much blood in CT. So again, you see that there is a fresh uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, anyhow. This is the left approach going towards left optic nerve and some atherosclerosis, but not so heavy in the carotid artery. Here you see extremely heavy atherosclerosis in China, in, at least in Henan. Now we check the situation. It was a larger aneurysm. We put the temporary clip again here. Proximal temporary clip. And then here I didn't put this star clip. And this is the pilot clip, first clip going there. And checking the situation. And Ah, what happens now? Bleeding? Yeah. Now something happened. So this bleeding from the base of the aneurysm. There was some atherosclerosis and the, the aneurysm broke at the base. Now it's a very difficult situation. I have added already, already temporary clip proximally. And now try to manage the situation. One clip, second below that, this is double clipping method. The clip, first clip is pushing the second clip down. And now let's see what happens. Is it okay? And I travel with the clips. I go again with the clip below the first one to take the bleeding side at the base of the aneurysm. And now I took the temporary clip out. But it seems that it is still bleeding. Yeah, it's still bleeding. It looks terrible, very difficult situation. So now I coagulate down the aneurysm and uh, can we handle that? Yeah, I coagulated down the aneurysm and now travel with the clips proximally more and more proximally because the rupture was at the base. And take the first clip out, uh, the, the distal clip out, 
and check the situation. And still pleading, still pleading. So I coagulate down the base of the aneurysm to have the bleeding side and the control and then put the clip there and then take the temporary clip out and cut the aneurysm so to see all the base and then I have the remnant of the aneurysm here and I coagulate it totally down and move the clip and put one more clip this is now the it should be the final final position of the clips. I, I'm playing now. I'm playing now. What is? Yeah, I took the clip out and coagulated more, and now seems to be under control. Sometimes, if you play too long, you may, might have difficulties. Here, it looks that I am not happy with the clips. But now it is the final position. We are doing ICG and, and the rupture site was at the base of the aneurysm caused by the, our manipulation and also very difficult to handle that. These are the post-operative angios looking good and the patient was doing good recovery but very critical situation in the operation that could be handled. Next case. This is a right unruptured PCAM segment ICA aneurysm. Rather old patient, 74 years old patient. CT angiographies. And here is the operation supine position, lateral supraorbital approach, right side again creeping down to the right optic nerve, and then uh, some bleeding. When you retract here, you might have from the, the veins at the temporal pole, you might have bleeding. And this they might be difficult to stop. Coagulating here, arachnoid, and then Checking the situation with the detector about the arm. And this is where is the aneurysm? Where is the aneurysm? Checking for the aneurysm. This has very special direction. This aneurysm is directed posteriorly. It is more seldom usual. They are directed, directed laterally. Went two words, and this is the final thing now. Different solution. So I took a ring clip, and the ring clip is taking the base of the aneurysm the below carotid artery. And here you have you have to be very careful, of course. This clip might take also the peak calm, so you have to check it. And we are checking it now so that the peak calm remains free from the clip and only the base of the aneurysm is taken. And this is a very useful small Doppler probe to check the flow because you can repeat it all the time. I see Chiancio, you cannot do so many times, and it takes more time. So this is very useful here. So this is a part of the aneurysm. Here is part, uh, I couldn't show papaverin to release the spasm from the manipulation and then situation after surgery. And then comes closing in layers, clean water, by flushing, and these are the control angios which show the ring clip, L form ring clip in place. And these are some more controls to see that the whole aneurysm has been taken. Next case.
is left ruptured become ICA anorism. You see the heavy bleeding in CT, CT and this is the CT angio, rather large anorism. And with pooch, secondary pooch at the end, showing where is the rupture site. Latra supra approach, one layer flap, opening the dura. In 10 minutes, I'm intradural with this simple flap. This is the right optic nerve. And here I open the lamina terminalis to get space and dissect here the sylvian fissure because it is a large aneurysm. So uh, it is good to open the proximal sylvian fissure here. This is uh, Amiyama's kisos where they are in the picture and they are now dissecting the sylvian fissure open. This is water dissection to clean the field. And you see there's a lot of blood, fresh saparagnoid hemorrhage. And now we are seeing after flushing and cleaning the field, we see the aneurysm and some bleeding. And now again, flushing, cleaning the field. And now we should have a temporary clip. Yeah, it's going here. The proximal carotid temporary clip. And now with the micro dissector, cleaving the field for the second temporary clip below anterior choroid artery. And now you see the aneurysm is lack, but it was rather large. So I put the clip here on the base of the aneurysm. It was a ring clip because it is a large aneurysm and a straight clip after that and take the distal temporary clip out. Cleaning the field, checking how is the aneurysm? Is the aneurysm slack totally occluded? No, it was not. So I put once more the temporary clips and I have to change the clips now. And uh, this is now again some bleeding. I take the clips out and I should take a, yeah, I take a straight clip and put it oblique. So to take all the base of the aneurysm. And here, temporary clips removed. There's some. Now we, I coagulate the aneurysm and put once more temporary clips. Why? I want to advance and change the position of the clip. And there remains some small part of the aneurysm remains unclipped. I would put here a small clip, and I will. I put it here, so to take this part also and now it should be okay don't play anymore don't play anymore yeah checking the situation now and what yeah, he's playing what yeah change the position of the small clip and now doppler probe checking if there is flow in the aneurysm and again changing, again changing. Now, I, this surgeon is crazy, he should stop now with the clips. Okay, now coagulating the aneurysm down. And now papaverine added to release the manipulation spasm. Now this is post-operative CT control, several clips, three, two or three clips there, and the patient recovered well. Next video. This is edited by Johan Soku, who was responsible for the 1001 collection of the videos.
So these are CD angios and uh, very small looking anors here. Again, four millimeter maximally. Left lateral supraalta approach, short incision. One layer incision. And now dura open here. And we go for the aneurysm. Left optic nerve, sub dissection of the basal systems, opening the proximal cilia and fissure. This is good sometimes to do in PCAM, ICA aneurysms, if they are higher located. So dissection with schizos here. And now we soon can see the aneurysm, cut the arachnoid around. Feeling the proximal carotid, a small perforator. And now you see the left anterior croda artery is above the aneurysm. This mu must be saved if you clip occlude anterocoroid artery, then the patient has extreme severe deficit. So we have to be, take utmost care to preserve anterocoroid artery. And it is so close to the aneurysm. So you have to be very careful not to occlude that. This temporary clip is going below anterocoroid artery. So now the aneurysm is uh, trapped thin wall, I used to coagulate the aneurysm down and then put the clip here, like gentle handling, so aneurysm is going down. And then putting the clip here, this written here, pilot clip. I take the temporary clips out and I think I should add one more clip there. Proximal temporary clip coming out and then I should add one more clip here. I'm checking the situation. Yeah, one more clip is going there. Double clipping, taking the base of the aneurysm and I leave both clips there because the first distal clip, oh, I'm taking it out, oh, I should leave it, I should leave it, what I'm doing. I was just telling that the, the first clip is pressing the second one down. Okay, now I'm playing, now I'm playing. So there's remnant of the aneurysm and I put proximal temporary clip and coagulate more down, kill the aneurysm totally. And now I should, oh, I, there's no clip now in the aneurysm. I'm making the IC angiography without clip, this, this, this looks uh, not nice, but I have a good flow in operation. And then now I should draw the aneurysm remnant inside with the small forceps, or then put second clip there. This is the situation now. Yeah, Papa Verin. And this is the post-operative control. So I think there's one, one more video for some special reasons. right unruptured PCAM, ICA aneurysm, main part of the aneurysm we operate are small, even of the ruptured aneurysms. 
here. Ah, in this case, it has been coiled. It has been coiled. So there's the compaction of the coils, and that's why surgery was done. Coils were compacted at the end of the aneurysm. Uh, there's something wrong in the video editing. It looks like I'm doing twice the skin incision. So we go down. This right optic nerve. And sharp dissection. Downstairs with the big looking microschisos. using very high magnification, the highest of the microscope, so to see better. And then we see the aneurysm and we see the, also the coils at the end of the aneurysm. So it looks like that when the coils are inside. If they have been longer time, so they may be involved in the aneurysm wall and they are more difficult to do here. So checking the situation, I put temporary clip here, proximal carotid. And put the pilot clip on the base of the anodes because there is enough base to put the clip because the coils have com been compacted very much. Take the temporary clip out and now begin to check the situation. Here's IC angiography. After clipping and if you can manage without opening the aneurysm and taking the coils out, it's good. If there's enough space here, I open the aneurysm and uh, manipulate, cut the coils and take part of them out. But it's of course not necessary. Then put a second clip here to take the base totally check the situation and this is how the final situation is so cleaning the field and these are controls with a lot of artifacts here with the clips and coils So these were the videos. Once more, become ICA aneurysms. They are not easy aneurysms. There is a lot of discussion, so-called cocktail party discussion. These are easy aneurysms. How fast can I do this aneurysm? But it is very important to note that at least those very proximal aneurysms might be very dangerous and difficult to treat, needing skull uh, removal of the skull base so you have to be very careful with them so finally i want to say to be the highest level of neurosurgery you have to have good skills in surgery and english because the english is the language of the neurosurgery and to make to report your experience it happens in english so you have to have the skills in scientific writing and English and this is very important and finally don't shave the beautiful Chinese hair like here females have beautiful hair and you should do focused minimal invasive haircut because the present standard is to take all the hair out and this is not good so you can do like in this 10 years old girl parietal avium you can save the hair and the patient is extremely happy to have beautiful hair when going home this is this is what i think important and could be changed here in china quickly when changing the attitude 
and to speak about the treatment modality there is a lot of speaking that to open the head is not is dangerous it is especially in china you have the old tradition to think that the open to open the head is dangerous it is not dangerous it is our profession those who say that to open the head is dangerous they should call, not call themselves neurosurgeons and those who are opening the head in a dangerous way should stop their activities do something else endovascular neurology or psychiatry not research so this is good team here in henan good team is very important no one can do surgery alone so i thank you very much jk this was my lecture here thank you okay you thank you very much would you like